Once upon a time in Ireland stood a castle proud and free on the stormy coast of Antrim, high above the Irish Sea. Lords and ladies gathered nightly in the great hall of the king. Bread and meat and wine did flow, bards would play and poets sing. Welcome to Deep in the Crypt, a channel dedicated to the paranormal, the strange, and the supernatural. If you like the video, please stop on the like button's toes and subscribe to the channel. And now, it's time to go deep in the crypt. Dunluce Castle is a breathtaking fortress located high on a cliff on the rugged shores of Antrim in the north of Ireland. It's hard to imagine a more romantic location for a castle on the top of a remote rocky cliff, overlooking rolling green fields on the one side and the crashing waves of the North Atlantic Ocean on the other. There was first a wooden Gaelic fort here that pre-existed the stone castle. When the Anglo-Normans invaded Ireland at the end of the 12th century, they began building heavy stone castles all over Ireland to protect their newly conquered land. Dunluce Castle was built by the second Earl of Ulster, Richard de Burr, as the northernmost castle in Ireland. Over time, the Anglo-Normans of Ulster began to lose power and Dunluce was captured by the native Irish McQuillan clan. They held the castle for many years, until it was, in turn, taken by the fearsome MacDonnell clan. The MacDonalds. The MacDonalds were a Gaelic clan originating from Scotland. The Scottish clans had a culture and a language almost identical to the native Irish, A travel between Scotland and Northern Ireland was common at that time. Scottish clans, like the MacDonalds, settled in Ireland and often integrated with other clans. That's not to say things were always peaceful. Feuds and wars between clans for land and power were frequent. Sorley Boy One of the most powerful Irish chiefs in the 1500s was a man called Sorley Boy MacDonnell. He was born in 1505 in Bally Castle and he became a courageous and enigmatic leader for the MacDonnell clan. Sorley Boy is an English version of the Gaelic name Sourle Bui. The Gaelic word Bui means yellow, referring to the colour of his hair. Sorley Boy and his clan went to war with the McQuillans and the O'Neills for dominance in Northern Ulster. He also went to war with Queen Elizabeth of England, who wanted to extend English law and influence over Ireland. In a battle against the English, he was captured and imprisoned in Dublin Castle for an entire year. He was then released in a swap for English prisoners held by his brother James. After winning his freedom, he kidnapped the constable of Carrick Fergus Castle and released him unharmed in return for a large ransom. Next, Sorley Boy thoroughly defeated the McQuillans and he drove them out of Northern Antrim and he triumphantly took Dunluce Castle as his prize. Spanish Cannons. Some time later, the castle was attacked from the sea by a Spanish fleet. The Spanish cannons roared, but they failed to inflict damage on the mighty Dunluce Castle. One of their ships foundered in the sea and sank. Ironically, the cannons from the ship were recovered and used by the McDonald's to reinforce the castle defences. Shane O'Neill. Next, Sorley Boy went to war with the O'Neills of Ulster. Shane O'Neill, their chief, was a powerful and shrewd adversary. Many conflicts between these clans gave way to an uneasy alliance. Meanwhile, Queen Elizabeth, who was intent on ruling Ulster, deployed a divide and conquer strategy against these warring families. She would first recognize one clan as the superior force while ignoring the other. Then she would switch allegiance to the opposing clan, thus stoking continued conflict. Treachery. Eventually, in 1565, Shane O'Neill decisively defeated the MacDonalds and captured Dunluce Castle. Sorley Boy and his brother James were taken prisoner. James died in prison and two years later, Shane O'Neill was defeated by the McDonald's and he realized a truce was necessary. Shane was invited to feast with the McDonald's 
at Cushenden. He brought along his prisoner, Sorley Boy, whom he released back to his family. However, at the feast, the McDonald's, in an unprovoked act of treachery, turned on Shane and slaughtered him. Surprisingly, after the murder, the O'Neills and the McDonald's did agree a truce, and once again, formed an uneasy alliance. Sorley Boy then successfully resisted attempts by Queen Elizabeth and the Earl of Essex at colonizing Ulster with loyal English settlers. Rathlin Island Massacre. Sorley Boy was now continuously harassed by the Earl of Essex. He was willing to come to terms with Essex as long as his land was guaranteed and his title was recognized. But sadly, Essex wanted nothing less than to destroy Sorley Boy and submit him to the English crown. He defeated Sorley Boy in battle with help from the O'Neills, who had switched sides. So much for that alliance. Then Essex returned to Carrickfergus Castle and ordered one of the most despicable deeds ever carried out on Irish soil. He launched an attack on Rathlin Island, which was used as a hideout for the McDonald's. Sorley Boy watched helpless from the mainland as 700 of his clansmen, women and children, including his own family, were brutally murdered in cold blood by English forces. Sir John Norris and Sir Francis Drake were involved in this act of butchery against the innocent. This is probably why many Irish do not respect titles like Sir because of such barbaric deeds. Essex proudly declared that Sorley Boy would surely be driven mad by witnessing such an appalling atrocity. But Essex would be mistaken. Payback. In retaliation, Sorley Boy attacked and raided Carrickfergus Castle once again which restored his power in Ulster. However, there was to be no rest for Sorley. Sorley's one-time rivals, the McQuillans, united with Essex and the O'Neills and launched a devastating attack on Sorley's territory. In response, the MacDonald leader assembled a small force and taunted and provoked his enemies into attacking him. On an early misty morning, they charged across what looked like a field but turned out to be a bog. They were trapped and then slaughtered by Sorley Boy's men. When enemy reinforcements arrived, they witnessed this carnage. Sorley Boy rode out to greet them and then convinced them to join his cause. This was a magnificent victory against all the odds at the Battle of Slevenora. The Ghost of Kerry. Following this great success, Sorley Boy once again allied with the O'Neills and further strengthened his position. There followed a few years of peace until John Perrault loyal to Queen Elizabeth, invaded Ulster from Dublin, capturing Dunluce Castle and driving Sorley Boy back to Scotland. John Perrault placed a man called Peter Carey in command of the castle. However, as you can probably guess, Sorley Boy wasn't having this. He returned to Ireland with an army and recaptured Dunluce Castle, and his first act was to hang Peter Carey from the battlements. <laughs> and the ghost of Peter Carey, with his ponytail and his purple coat, reportedly haunts Dunluce Castle to this very day. Many heads. Following these events, Sorley Boy went to Dublin to agree peace terms with Queen Elizabeth. When he arrived in Dublin, he was shown the severed head of his son, who had been executed by the English. This was yet another attempt to intimidate and subjugate Sorley Boy. Not wanting to show any reaction, Sorley Boy simply shrugged and said defiantly, my son has many heads. Peace. In the end, Queen Elizabeth agreed to Sorley Boy's demands of retaining his land and his castle in return for keeping peace with the English. So Sorley Boy successfully secured the future of the Macdonald clan for many generations to come. Sorley Boy's resistance against all other Irish clans as well as aggressive British Empire expansion under Queen Elizabeth is nothing short of astonishing. They held on loose all the way to 1690 when the Catholic King James was defeated by the Protestant King William. At that point, the McDonald's, being Catholic, lost their wealth and their land, and the castle fell into ruins. So folks, I really hope you enjoyed the story of the Irish-Scottish hero, Sorley Boy. He was one of the most courageous, rebellious, 
and intelligent clan leaders in Ireland in the 16th century. And he certainly deserves his place in history. Now, Dunluce Castle is most definitely haunted by the ghost of Peter Carey. But there are other reported hauntings in the ruined castle, and that will be the subject of my next video. But it was very clear to me that Sorley Boy deserved an entire video dedicated to him. Please remember to stomp on the like button's toes on the way out and subscribe to the channel. And remember, stay scary. He returned to army. Peace. Peace. So Sorley Boy successfully secured the future jet of the... Uh, so Sorley Boy successfully secured the future of the McDonald flat.